and thank you for your time so early in the morning uh, i would request uh, uh, dr mazhar dotio now to please introduce our next speaker mazhar sir thank you dr majood gal sir and uh, thank you dr dayanand sir for participating in this sin region conference now i would like to uh, invite our next uh, speaker dr ajaz sheikh dr ajaz uh, the topic of dr ajaz sheikh is a pedagogical developments in the institutions of higher, higher education dr ajaz sheikh did his phd in the marketing uh, he is the associate editor of an rsvl journal digital business Uh, Dr. Sheikh has participated in uh, international conferences in the UK, USA, Hawaii, Norway, Spain, Greece, uh, China, France, Germany, Portugal, and other countries. Uh, he, his publications are recorded in Pew's One Book and over 40 scholarly articles published in uh, renowned scholarly journals. So, Dr. Ajaz is one of the members of the Center for Inclusive Digital Enterprise. Uh, new Zealand, uh, Dr. Aja Sheikh, please. I invite you and uh, and over the mic to you to present your uh, presentation. Thank you so much, Mazhar Sahab. Can you hear me? Ji, bilkul sir. Uh, yes, bilkul. All right. So now I can share the slides, right? Yes. All right. So let me go through the quickly. Please let me know if you can see my slides. Yeah, we can see your screen. Yes, sir. Yes, we can see. Thank you so much, Sindhvian, for this opportunity and uh, such a nice presentations coming from the speakers. In fact, I am learning a lot of new things. Being a very young faculty member, working at one of the universities in Finland. Uh, I said about me by Mazhar Sahab. Yes, I did my PhD uh, with major in digital marketing, and I am teaching different courses at university level. Uh, master's degree courses and uh, bachelor's degree courses and uh, i'm also involved in some kind of a pedagogical development so that's why i decided to choose this topic for this presentation to share to practically show you that how the things are actually working in finland and other part of the europe uh it was a good observation that i could see some of those developments Uh, in the institutions in Sindh, and it was a it was a good thing. So maybe my presentation could give some kind of a motivation uh, to the leadership in in Sindh uh, universities to to maybe replicate or motivate these kind of a practices for the benefit of our students. So what is the situation? What is the what's happening actually? so the industry is getting highly competitive we all all know this thing okay and they are expecting more from the from the universities to perform and the new business models and business innovations are coming and they are very rapid they are very very disruptive and there is an extensive usage of the mobile applications everywhere and we see that the erp systems which are the enterprise resource planning systems excuse me they are also coming into a lot of usage we also see the developments on the artificial intelligence and robotics so the industry is changing the mindset is changing okay and also we see the tech savvy and digital consumers are being the part of everyday everyday life and the universities in global west maybe the developed world they are doing things proactively i must say so they are introducing new courses new programs for the for the university students and of course when we it comes to the introduction of the new courses then definitely the new pedagogical methods are also coming into being and as we are discussing since uh, uh, afternoon that the purpose of every effort is to increase the student learning their interest their engagement and their worth so they could be more useful for our industry and bring some socio economic uh, improvements so this is this is the background like what is happening okay and what is actually expected from the universities of course the world economic forum a very active forum they have been doing a lot of market research they have been collecting a lot of information and we should go through and look at those developments so what what they say they say that there are certain job 
profiles which will eliminate, which will disappear. And there will be a new job profiles coming into in the next few years. Okay. And those new job profiles are like data analytics, uh, scientist, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning specialists are required. We need the software and application developers, digital marketing professionals, of course, the data transformation, digital transformations and uh, new technology specialist, of course, and then the information technology services. So this is a new way of working in the in the industry and this is what the industry is expecting from their uh, from the people to perform considering these uh, these fast changes so now the focus is more on actually the universities okay and then the second thing is about uh, this kind of a generation's landscape. Okay, so we know about what is the expectations of the industry. And then we know we are trying to understand who's the stakeholder. So the stakeholder is actually, for example, the generation Z, as we can see from this picture. Okay, so let's start from the, from, we had the baby boomers who are already graduated. They are almost retired now. They are not actually coming to the universities anymore. Okay, we do not see generation X and generation Y as well as, because generation Y is the millennials, they also graduated. So that is not also our concern. So our concern is generation Z, which are now applying for the master's degree program, bachelor's degree programs, or they are already in the universities. So who are those generation Z uh, consumers are the students, okay? So what I'm saying is that if we understand the stakeholder, we will understand that what we should deliver. So that is the purpose to bring this into discussion. Okay, so a, a breakdown uh, by age, uh, then we can look like that, that who are the baby boomers? Okay, so baby boomers are actually the people who are actually born uh, in 40s and 60s, and they are now uh, around 60s and 70 years old. And then generation Z, we see they are now 41 to 56 years old. So they are very senior people. And then we also see like uh, the generation Y are the millennials. They are between 25 to 40 years old. And then we have the generation Z, which is the main focus of the universities these days. Okay, so we try to understand what are the expectations of the generation Z so that we should have the courses and the content to meet. Okay, so what are their characteristics? So. Over 30% of the global population is now Generation Z, which is a mm. huge, huge proportion. And out of those 30%, 89% of the university students now belong to the Generation Z category, okay? Then the Generation Z is born and raised by the social wave. They are digital centric and technology is their identity. So look how, what, we, what kind of a people we are dealing, dealing with. Then Generation Z students have their own unique characteristics they in, that influence their approaches to education and work. And then the Generation Z students, they are first to be born into the totally digital world. They have access to a lot of information and they are most electronically connected generation. And what we call them, we call them always on generation. They are truly digital native. They are mobile generation. They are determined and they are very responsible. They are career minded. They demand for a meaningful learning environment. They demand for the new skill set and they ask for improved communication, both written and speaking. These are the expectations of the, of the, of the people that we are dealing with these days in our universities, either that university is in our Sint province or that university is in Finland. We have the same category of the people that we are dealing with. And I am one of the teachers. I'm facing so much challenges to, to come to their expectation. And this is what I'm going to demonstrate that how we are meeting their expectations. Okay. Now, what happened in my classroom sometimes, and I have the observation, okay? First 15 minutes, curiosity, the learning interest, looking forward to a new thing when they come to the classroom. And then maybe after 30 minutes, we could see this situation. They are not interested and they lose, the, lose their interest. And what happened, of, of course, there is some problem at the teacher's end, okay? Why? So that's actually the situation. And then after 40 minutes, then someone says, okay, we can, we have attendance. So they are, they show their lack of interest. They, they don't want to be in the class anymore because they didn't learn anything. Okay. Because we, as a teacher, we did not come to their expectations. Okay. And then 
this is a classical landscape I want to share. Suppose we have a universities which are regulated by the HAC and then they have the faculty, they have the programs and they have the student as their stakeholder. They want to train them, they want to teach them and there are their industry uh, and their expectations of the industry and there is a link between the industry and the university, okay? And the universities are providing this workforce uh, to the industry, okay? Now, where are the gaps actually that we should consider? Okay, so the gap is here. When the faculty is actually what teaching to the student and the teach student are not actually being satisfied or happy. And then ultimately this will create the gap between the student skill set and the expectations of the industry. So industry is not getting what they're expecting from the university. So these are the gaps, okay? And then how to meet those gaps, okay? Then of course you should have uh, an updated and industry oriented content in the program that could reduce this gap. You should have, uh, you should develop and implement and deploy the new pedagogical method that could decrease this gap. And then of course, then you should have identify and provide access to the new resources to the students so that they should learn what is actually happening in the industry these days. So these are the three things that could be done to reduce those gaps and produce something for the industry, which is useful. Okay, now what is content? The content, if I, if I put it in a very, very simple way, the content is what to teach and the pedagogy is how to teach and the resource is what learning resources to use and what learning resources to provide. Okay, so this is a logical flow of the things that is happening in every university. At least I have seen it in, in Finland. So you should have a content, a very strong content. And one example of the content we see like Professor Daya, he show us some learning management system. And then we see a pedagogy that how would you deliver the content to the student to increase their learning, to increase their engagement and to increase their worth. And how would you do that? Of course, you need a certain resources. The resource could be, could be the literature, a resource could be, for example, a YouTube video. A resource could be anything that could bring the student to the learning atmosphere. So this is a classical combination uh, of, the, of the learning atmosphere, okay? Now, in, in pedagogy, if I, if I try to define the pedagogy, because if we define something, then we understand uh, the concepts. So pedagogy is a conscious activity by a person to enhance the learning of another person. Okay, and there are new pedagogical methods being used. For example, we have VCMT method, which actually uh, luckily I have developed and implemented in the University of Finland, and we are using here. And then we have a case method teaching, which is a very old pedagogical method, but that's in fact a very useful method. We have a game based learning pedagogy, such as Kahoot, and then we have this Pali, which is a Finnish word, and I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, these, uh, this uh, pedagogy, I will show you how it's working. And then we have a blended learning actually, and the flipped are the inverted classroom learning. I'm using the flipped classroom learning sometimes, and that's also a very good way to teach the students. And then we have simulations, like the need of the hour, the uh, simulations, like how the things are working uh, in real, real life. So you bring students close to that simulation environment and they learn a lot. So that's very important part of the pedagogy. Then of course we have some instructional videos, clips, we have ped up, we have the podcasts and we have the part-time learning, a uh, prime time learning method. Okay. So all these pedagogical uh, uh, techniques are adopted and used by the faculty members to, to increase their student learning. And I don't know how many of them are actually being used in the universities in Pakistan, okay? I'm sure the case method teaching is, is a very popular, it should be used there, but let's see, okay? So this is actually the situation which I'm trying to, uh, trying to tell you that uh, a lot of developments are taking place, not only in the industry, but also from the teaching, from the university uh, point of view, okay? And then, and let's see, I, I'm, I'm going to show you, uh, this uh, uh, how 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 this is actually working. Uh, please let me know if you can see uh, some picture. Uh, Kaisab, can you please confirm? Uh, right now we are still seeing your presentation. Presentation, okay, no problem. Then I can share it again. Okay. Um, okay, so let's share my this thing. Okay. Um, 
please let me know if you can see it now. Yeah, we can see it now. Okay. Now, can you see this um, Moodle? Yeah, digital technologies and user behavior. All right, very nice. Okay, so continue, continue with the, what the, Dias, uh, the uh, Professor Daya said. Actually, I thought I should bring a very brief overview about this, and then I will move to the uh, another demonstration. So this is actually the model which is also being used in Pakistan, I'm sure. So this is be, will be very easy to, to show you that how the things are doing. Suppose this is one of the courses that I'm teaching here, digital technologies and the user behavior. And of course, if I jump to the... Uh, to the course information, we have to be very clear because this is the thought of the pedagogy. Because the course content should be explicit. A student should know beforehand what they are going to learn and what, how we can meet their expectation, as I said, okay? So this is actually a brief overview of what I'm going to teach in this course. So course information and the course content briefly so that they know what is, uh, what is going to happen. And the course content is the major things that we are going to cover. In this, in this course, suppose for example, these things, and then what kind of a pedagogy I'm going to use. So this is the like the blended uh, pedagogy method that I'm using in this course. So the student should know that how it will work because I will be including the uh, class lectures, the videos, case studies, class presentations, guest speakers, and the graded assignments. So this is the part of the blended learning pedagogy. And then there will be some distance learning options because in Finland, and there are many, many students who actually register from different European Union member countries. For some reasons, they could not travel. So we offer them to do the course while staying in their respective countries, okay? So we offer the distant learning and that should be also explicitly mentioned in the, in the course outline, okay? And then this is the case studies, literature in the industry examples. If I have anything, I should put it over here. And the students are interested, they could go and check uh, the, the, the literature here. And then of course, all the class presentations are here. And if there are certain, certain notes with the presentation, then I put those notes as well, okay? And then there is a group presentation slides because there are group presentation. They put all their slides into this Moodle system and I will go and I will assist those slides from here. And then I have to define the learning objectives and the completion mode, okay? Assessment criteria is a very, very important part that students are mostly confused with. So we show to students that how the assessment criteria is look like and how they will be graded. Okay, so I put here the 40% for the learning task and the deadline to submit the learning task is also mentioned here along with the timings. Okay, so everything is explicitly defined. There should not be any confusion with the students. Okay, and there should be the 30% weightage for the group presentation and when the group presentation will be held, the date is mentioned here. And likewise, you likewise, everything is here. Then the if there is an assign, assignment, then how the assignment will be assessed. I, 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 I share all the the, uh, the assessment criteria here so that they should know. And uh, some teaching calendar, what will happen on the day when what, what I will do in the first lecture, okay? And when the lecture will be held, what will be the duration of the lecture and what we are going to discuss in the lecture. Everything is beforehand provided to the students. They should know what's going to happen each and, I mean, each and everything should be explicit and then everything is going, all the lectures will be here and there are guest speakers, then their profile should be here. There are three guest speakers as coming from where Marcos is coming from Brazil, Timo is coming from Finland, Professor Anand is coming from India. So everything is mentioned in Moodle. Then assignment, they submit the assignment through the, uh, turn it in the, the plagiarism software so that all the assignments should go through the plagiarism software and we do not allow the plagiarism activities in anyway so everything is transparent for the students okay and now if i if i show you how what kind of a uh, uh, how how we are using this kind of a uh, just a <clears throat> i should put it here here okay uh, i can show you the one uh, pedagogy that i'm using here which is this game based pedagogy okay now here um, in this pedagogy uh, Okay, uh, it should be here like this. Now, this is a case study. One case study that I, I, I check the case study and then I put all the case study into this application. We have developed this application in our university. So there is a situation, there is a scenario, a student will read and they will start and they will choose something like uh, from the, from suppose from the leadership point of view and they click some answer here 
and it will show them what your answer is and the decision will be here. So this will show this line if they are going in the right direction or if they are going in the in the in otherwise. Because if this line is going down, it means their responses is not the reflection of the of the true answer. Okay. And I will do it again. Suppose I choose this one over here options and I do the decision and see line is coming down. It means that response could be the better response. No problem. They can go move forward and they, let's say they select this option and then they see the decision. Oh, it is going further down. Okay. So this is the real time feedback to the student that whatever the case study they were reading. Now the case study is in the shape of a, of a game and it is uh, being used in this in this game so they whenever they do it they learn if they are they are understanding the content of the case study properly or not so it goes on so they will go and they do the things and they know so it shows the poor performance because their responses were supposed not good okay so they get the feedback and they, they have the opportunity to then discuss the things with the teacher. So, so you can you can see how much the students are engaged with the with the content. Okay. And then likewise, if I show you one more thing that I'm using, that is I, I promise to show to, 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 to show you about the simulation. So this is one of the simulation that I'm using in my class. This is a very popular simulator, which is called the Stukent uh, simulation. I would advise every one of you, if you do not know Eja, about this simulation. Eja, sir, you yes. have five more minutes to go. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, so if you are, have not used this simulation, please, uh, you can have the, the membership not so expensive for this. You can allow all your students to come to the simulator and do the things, actually. So when you start the simulation, the first thing the simulator is going to do, it gives you the access to the lot of uh, the literature. Look at the books. I mean, these are the completely new books and you will get the free access to all the books if you want to read. So this, this is, it comes uh, with the membership of the Stukent, okay? So now you can go and you can check the content, you can read at your free time, okay? Because Stukent is with you always. And then if I go to my course, which is the digital marketing action course, this is the title of the course. And if I go there, I can go to the Mimic Pro, suppose, okay? In the Mimic Pro, and then I would, I would, I would see like how uh, the students are there. So all these students are registered here, all my students, okay. And I divide them into teams, which I can do from from here, okay. And if you look at the at the teams, uh, then um, like C3 team, STJ company, and Vision Force. So these teams are identified by the student themselves. So they are very innovative, okay? So they choose the team members and then um, they do the, uh, I mean, the uh, Stukent Mimic Pro, okay? And then I can check their reports from here, if I go to this, so I can see their performance, how they are doing. Of course, this was done in the last semester. So we see 100% progress of every every uh, uh, student. So they are doing well. So they complete out there. Then if I want to do the, uh, their assessment suppose then i can see here the student ranking here okay so the system is uh, providing me the necessary information that if the students are doing good very good are excellent so everything is in front of me okay i can go and i can assess their performance and then i can give them feedback look you are doing very on the seo you are doing very good on the email marketing you are shopping uh, shopping and when you do the e-shopping your your performance is not so when you are doing the ad groups okay you are doing some somehow good so everything is uh, in front of them they could see them and they could they could understand how they are performing okay, you know so so this is the pedagogy that we are using. So this is the simulation. And I show you about the game uh, uh, pedagogy and uh, also the module that how we design the course, how we how we implement the, in the course. Now, there is one more thing in my presentation, presentation slide, okay? There was always uh, some question. Please let me know if you can see my slides. Yeah, we can see it. So so that was the brief demonstration. I, w I wish I could give, uh, take you more into those simulations and uh, uh, the the game things 
and also I show you how the uh, visual case method teaching is working, uh, which unfortunately I cannot show because of the time constraint. But, but I, I I remember someone told me that I should offer some some advice that how could we could we uh, do uh, the things better way. So one of my advice is is that the universities may kindly establish the pedagogical centers. Okay, those pedagogical centers should be managed by the senior faculty members who have a lot of experience in teaching and they could identify, they could conduct the regular pedagogical training for the young and aspiring faculty members. So of course we have the ORIC, we have the quality assurance, but it would be nice if they have the pedagogical centers as well. Then they should introduce more in action courses like the one I show you in the simulation. Okay, so these in courses, uh, uh, they actually do not involve any 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 formal lecture, but practical exercises and simulations. So that could be another uh, suggestion. And then a good mix of the curricula and the syllabi focusing local and international issues and developments. So the the syllabus should not focus on the local developments, but it should be very international. And the GDPR are the regulations, the PhD are regulations. The students should know about the about the regulations. That's a very important part of the. Of of the, of the content. Then uh, the promote, support, and finance the research and development of the new pedagogical methods and their implementation. The, the leadership of the universities, they could come up with some ideas to, to deploy maybe two, three teachers and then ask them to, to do some kind of a new pedagogical things and to make sure that it should increase the students' learning as well. So that could be another suggestion. And then introduce and motivate the research-based development of the teaching. Okay, and the projects and emphasize interaction between the teaching and research. So that could be another, another suggestion uh, for the universities and mandate the updation and the revisions of the syllabus, the course content every year. This is very important. As I said, the industry's expectations are, are changing frequently. There is a, the, 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 ten, the changes in the, in, the, in the technology are so erratic, it's so, uh, so fast that the course content should follow those changes as well, okay? And then the, the universities, they should seek the regular feedback from the students and also from the industry. If their course content, if their program content is up to, the, up to their, their expectations, it is updated, it reflect the new changes uh, in the in the technology so these are some of the some of the uh, uh, suggestions uh, that may may help the universities to uh, to bring the improvements so thank you so much for your patience and uh, listening to my presentation uh, thank you.